In a galaxy dominated by powerful alien races and technological marvels, humanity was the joke, the bottom rung, the laughing stock. When a desperate distress call rang out from a distant Una's colony, the great powers turned their backs, dismissing the plight of the masses as beneath their concern. But for Captain Adam Kennedy and his ragtag crew aboard the Starship Odyssey, this was the moment they had been waiting for a chance to prove humanity's worth on the galactic stage. The distress signal from Zephyria painted a grim picture, a once-thriving colony on the brink of collapse, torn apart by the greed of its ruling elite. Governor Sirius and his inner circle had bled the planet dry, hoarding resources and wealth while the populace starved. Now, with the colony a lost cause, Sirius planned to abandon millions to their fate and flee with his fellow elites leaving only despair in his wake. But the humans of the Odyssey had other plans. Kennedy, a haunted war veteran, saw in this crisis an opportunity for humanity to step up and show what it meant to be truly civilized. His crew of outcasts and misfits, each with something to prove, rallied behind their captain, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. As the Odyssey raced towards Zephyria, the stakes couldn't have been higher. They were the only ones who answered the call, the only ones willing to fight for the lives the galaxy had discarded. On the surface, a powder keg awaited them, a planet in turmoil, a people pushed to the brink, and a ruthless enemy determined to maintain their grip on power at any cost. But the humans were undaunted. They knew the odds were stacked against them, that no one expected them to make a difference. But they also knew that compassion and courage were the hallmarks of a just society and they were determined to prove that these traits were not unique to humanity, but the cornerstone of any civilization worth fighting for. As the Odyssey prepared to enter the fray, its crew steeled themselves for the battles to come, ready to show the galaxy what it meant to be human. The fate of millions hung in the balance, and the intrepid crew of the Odyssey would stop at nothing to tip the scales in favor of justice. As the Odyssey slipped into orbit around Zephyria, its sensors painted a grim picture of the chaos below. Captain Kennedy stared at the readouts in disbelief, his eyes tracing the stark divides that scarred the planet's surface. Vast, sprawling slums, teeming with the desperate and starving, encircled the glittering enclaves of the elite like a tightening noose. The disparity was staggering, a testament to the depths of corruption and greed that had brought this once-thriving colony to its knees. Sir, I've never seen anything like this, Commander Ryder said, his voice tight with anger as he studied the data. The infrastructure is on the verge of collapse. Food, water, medical supplies. It's all being hoarded by the upper echelons. They're literally letting their own people die in the streets. Kennedy nodded grimly, his teeth gritted. And the rest of the galaxy is content to let it happen. Not on my watch. Liam, I want a full assessment of the situation. We need to know exactly what we're dealing with before we make our next move. As the crew set to work analyzing the colony's fractured systems, a flicker of hope stirred in the heart of Astropolis. Zara, a young Una's female hardened by a lifetime of struggle, caught wind of the humans' arrival. In the humans, she saw a chance to turn the tide against Governor Sirius and his iron-fisted rule. Zara gathered her trusted lieutenants in a dimly lit hideout, their faces etched with purpose. The humans are our chance, she said, her voice ringing with conviction. If we can convince them to join our cause, we might finally have the leverage we need to bring Sirius down. Chiron, Zara's closest friend and advisor, leaned forward, his eyes gleaming. But can we trust them? What if they're just another pawn in Sirius's game? We have to try, Zara insisted. We're out of options. This may be our last chance to save our people. As the Resistance plotted their next move, Captain Kennedy and his officers descended to the planet's surface, stealing themselves for a tense meeting with Governor Sirius. The palace was a monument to excess, all gleaming spires and lush gardens, a stark contrast to the squalor that surrounded it. Sirius greeted the humans with a smile that never reached his eyes, his words dripping with false sincerity. Kennedy played along, but his instincts screamed that something was amiss. The governor's evasive answers and the heavily armed guards that shadowed their every step set the captain's nerves on edge. Just as the meeting drew to a close, 
A deafening explosion rocked the city. Alarms blared as smoke billowed from a nearby government building, the target of a desperate attack by Zara's resistance. In an instant, the palace erupted into chaos. Kennedy and his officers fought their way back to the shuttle, dodging crossfire as resistance fighters clashed with government troops in the streets. As the shuttle careened back toward the Odyssey, the captain's mind raced. He had come to Zephyria expecting a straightforward evacuation mission. Instead, he found himself at the center of a powder keg, a planet on the brink of all-out civil war. On the Odyssey's bridge, the crew worked frantically to piece together the bigger picture. Intercepted communications painted a portrait of a society in freefall, of a people pushed to the breaking point by the greed of their leaders. Kennedy faced a momentous decision. The safe play was to cut and run, to leave the Unas to their fate like so many before them. But as he looked around at his crew, at the tenacity etched on their faces, he knew that was never an option. They had come to Zephyria to make a difference, to show the galaxy what it meant to be human. And that meant standing up for what was right, despite the toll. We stay, Kennedy said, his voice ringing with purpose. We find out what's really going on here, and we do whatever it takes to help these people. It's time for humanity to lead by example. As night fell over Astropolis, the battle lines were drawn. In the streets, Zara and her resistance fighters waged a desperate struggle against the might of Sirius's regime. And high above, the crew of the Odyssey prepared to plunge headlong into the fray, determined to rewrite the rules of a galaxy that had long dismissed them. The road ahead would be fraught with peril, a crucible that would test the mettle of Kennedy and his crew like never before. But as the captain looked out at the stars, he knew that this was their moment, their chance to show the galaxy what humanity was truly made of. The forgotten and the oppressed of Zephyria were counting on them, and the Odyssey would not let them down. The true struggle for the soul of a world was about to begin. As dawn broke over Astropolis, the Odyssey's crew sprang into action. Captain Kennedy assembled his senior staff in the ship's war room, their faces grim as he outlined their next moves. We need eyes and ears on the ground, Kennedy said, his voice low and intense. Dr. Reeves, I want you to assess the health situation in the slums. Liam, take a team and analyze the colony's infrastructure. We need to know what we're dealing with. Within hours, the away teams were on the surface, moving covertly through Zephyria's fractured landscape. Dr. Reeves and his medical team slipped through the winding alleys of the slums, their tricorders humming as they scanned the populace. The doctor's heart sank with each reading. Malnutrition was rampant, and disease ran unchecked through the cramped quarters. In a makeshift clinic, he examined a young Una's child, her scales dull and her eyes sunken. How long has she been like this? Reeves asked the mother, his translator relaying his words. Weeks, the woman replied, her voice barely above a whisper. There's no food, no medicine. The governors take everything. Across the city, Liam O'Brien and his engineers made their way through the colony's infrastructure network. As they accessed the central control systems, a pattern emerged that made O'Brien's blood boil. Captain, you need to see this, he said into his communicator. The agricultural systems, the water reclamation plants, they've all been deliberately sabotaged. Someone's been choking off the resources to keep the population under control. Back on the Odyssey, Kennedy absorbed the reports with growing anger. But before he could formulate a response, a priority alert flashed across the ship's comms. Sir, Commander Ryder called out, we're receiving an encrypted transmission from the surface. It's, it's the resistance. They want to meet. Kennedy's mind raced. This was the opening they needed, but it was also fraught with risk. He made his decision quickly. Set up the meeting. I'll go myself. As Kennedy prepared for his clandestine rendezvous, Another situation was unfolding on the Odyssey's bridge. A sleek shuttle bearing the insignia of Governor Sirius's regime approached the ship, requesting immediate docking. Commander Ryder greeted the new arrivals, his face a mask of diplomatic neutrality. At the head of the contingent stood Commander Drax, his cybernetic eye glowing as he surveyed the human vessel. We've come to oversee your humanitarian efforts, Drax said, his voice dripping with barely concealed suspicion. Ryder smiled thinly. Of course, we welcome the governor's interest in our mission, 
please allow me to give you a tour of our facilities. As Ryder led Drax and his guards through carefully prepared areas of the ship, Kennedy made his way to the abandoned factory on Zephyria's outskirts. The air was thick with dust and the acrid smell of decay. From the shadows, a figure emerged. Zara's eyes blazed with a fierce intensity as she approached the human captain. You came, she said simply. Not many would have. Kennedy nodded. We're here to help, but I need to know what we're getting into. What's your endgame here? Zara's words poured out, painting a vivid picture of Zephyria's plight and her vision for a just future. As she spoke, Kennedy felt the weight of the moment settle on his shoulders. The decisions he would make in the coming days would shape not just this world, but humanity's place in the galaxy. In the slums, Dr. Reeves and his team worked tirelessly, setting up makeshift clinics and distributing vital supplies. Word spread quickly among the Unas, and soon crowds gathered, desperate for help. O'Brien's engineers, meanwhile, began the delicate work of bypassing the sabotage systems, seeking ways to restore the colony's life-giving infrastructure. As night fell over Zephyria, the pieces were in motion. In hidden bases throughout the city, Zara's lieutenants prepared their forces for the coming conflict. On the Odyssey, Kennedy and his senior staff gathered to chart their course through the treacherous waters ahead. The humans had come to Zephyria seeking to prove their worth. Now, with the fate of millions hanging in the balance, they found themselves at the center of a struggle that would test not just their capabilities, but the very essence of what it meant to be human. Captain Kennedy's eyebrows furrowed as he stared at the holographic display of Zephyria's surface. The planet's wounds were laid bare before him. Sprawling slums, sabotaged infrastructure, and the glittering enclaves of the elite. His decision crystallized in that moment. Commander Ryder, prepare a secure channel. We're meeting with the Resistance. Hours later, Kennedy found himself in the bowels of an abandoned factory, face to face with Zara. Her eyes burned with a fierce intensity as she laid out the grim reality of Sirius's regime. He's bleeding us dry, Zara hissed, her translator barely keeping up with her rapid-fire speech. Every resource, every scrap of hope, it's all being funneled to the elites, and when there's nothing left, she trailed off, her meaning clear. Kennedy nodded grimly. We'll help, discreetly for now, but we'll help. The following days saw a flurry of covert activity. Dr. Reeves and his team set up hidden clinics in the slums, treating the sick and malnourished. O'Brien's engineers worked tirelessly to bypass sabotage systems, restoring clean water and power to neglected sectors. Lieutenant Marcus Croft found himself in an abandoned warehouse, surrounded by Zara's fighters. Remember, he said, demonstrating a takedown move, it's not about brute force, it's about using their strength against them. But their efforts didn't go unnoticed. Commander Drax stormed onto the Odyssey's bridge, his cybernetic eye pulsing an angry red. You're interfering in matters that don't concern you, human, he snarled at Kennedy. Leave now or face the consequences. Kennedy met Drax's glare unflinchingly. We're not going anywhere. The repercussions were swift and brutal. Sirius unleashed his shock troops on the slums, their energy weapons carving swaths of destruction through makeshift dwellings. Screams and weapons fire filled the air as Zara's fighters scrambled to evacuate civilians. In the chaos, Chiron fell, a blast catching him in the chest. Asha, her face streaked with grime and blood, rallied a group of fighters for a desperate counterattack. Odyssey, this is Kennedy, the captain's voice crackled over the comm. Execute Operation Safe Haven now! The ship's shuttles screamed through Zephyria's atmosphere, dodging orbital defenses. Human and Unas fought side by side, creating a corridor for the rebel leadership to reach the extraction points. Lieutenant Croft provided covering fire as Zara and Asha sprinted for a waiting shuttle. A stray blast caught him in the shoulder, spinning him around. He locked eyes with Zara for a moment before another shot took him in the back. As the shuttles lifted off, carrying their precious cargo of rebel leaders and wounded fighters, Kennedy watched the planet recede on the screen. The cost had been high, too high, but the fire in his eyes spoke of a dedication that couldn't be extinguished. Set course for the Galactic Council, he ordered his voice steel. 
It's time the galaxy knew the truth about Zephyria. Zephyria. The name hung heavy in the air as Kennedy stood before the Galactic Council, his teeth clenched. The Odyssey's journey to Nexus Prime had been fraught with tension, every crew member acutely aware of the weight of their mission. Esteemed representatives, Kennedy began, his voice steady despite the palpable disdain emanating from the assembled dignitaries. I come before you today not as a supplicant, but as a witness to atrocities that cannot be ignored. With a nod to O'Brien, the holographic display flickered to life. Images of Zephyria's ravaged infrastructure filled the chamber, followed by footage of Sirius's shock troops laying waste to civilian areas. Gasps and murmurs rippled through the audience. This is the reality of Zephyria, Kennedy continued, his words measured and precise. A colony systematically stripped of resources, its people pushed to the brink of extinction by their own government. As Kennedy spoke, he couldn't help but notice the subtle shifts in body language among the ambassadors. Some leaned forward, their interest peaked. Others slouched back, their expressions a mask of bored indifference. Ambassador Kadra of the Advent Empire sat bolt upright, her luminous eyes fixed on the brutal imagery. When Kennedy's gaze met hers, he saw a spark of something he'd been searching for since arriving at Nexus Prime. Genuine concern. Captain Kennedy, a gravelly voice cut through the silence. While these images are disturbing, Zephyria remains a sovereign colony. What would you have us do? Start a war over a backwater world? Kennedy's response was immediate. I'm not asking for war, Ambassador. I'm asking for justice, for aid, for the galaxy to finally acknowledge that the lives of the Unas matter. As the debate raged on, Kennedy felt a creeping sense of despair. The political maneuvering, the cold calculations of galactic stability, it all seemed so far removed from the suffering he'd witnessed firsthand. Just as hope seemed lost, Ambassador Kadra rose to her feet. Enough, she declared, her voice ringing through the chamber. I've seen enough. The Advent Empire will not stand idly by while innocent lives are destroyed. Captain Kennedy, you have our support. The chamber erupted into chaos. Accusations of naivety and recklessness flew, but Kadra stood firm. As the summit dissolved into bitter arguments, Kennedy and Kadra slipped away, their minds already turning to the logistics of the coming intervention. On the Odyssey's bridge, Kennedy received the first reports from Zephyria. His face grew ashen as he listened to Zara's frantic transmission. Sirius has gone mad, her voice crackled through the comms. He's burning everything. We can't hold out much longer. Kennedy's fingers dug into the armrests of his chair. Hold on, Zara. Help is coming. Just hold on. As the Odyssey raced towards Zephyria, joined by the sleek warships of the Advent Fleet, Kennedy couldn't shake the feeling that they were hurtling towards a point of no return. The fate of a world hung in the balance, and the true test of humanity's willpower was about to begin. The Odyssey's engines thrummed as it approached Zephyria, the planet's scarred surface coming into view on the main view screen. Captain Kennedy stood at the helm, his eyebrows furrowed as he surveyed the aftermath of their intervention. Status report, he ordered, his voice tight. Commander Ryder consulted her display. Governor Sirius's forces are in full retreat, sir. The Advan fleet has neutralized their orbital defenses. Kennedy nodded, allowing himself a brief moment of relief before focusing on the task at hand. Prepare landing parties. We have work to do. As shuttles descended through Zephyria's atmosphere, Kennedy found himself in the midst of a city in turmoil. Smoke rose from burning buildings, and the streets were lined with debris. Zara stood among the rubble, her scales dulled by dust and fatigue. We did it, she said, her voice a mixture of disbelief and exhaustion. But at what cost? Kennedy surveyed the scene, his eyes lingering on a group of Una's civilians emerging from a makeshift shelter. The real work starts now, he replied. In the days that followed, Zephyria began its slow transformation. Commander Yonkar's Advene peacekeepers patrolled the streets alongside Zara's fighters, maintaining order as the planet's new leadership took shape. Dr. Reeves set up a field hospital in what was once the governor's palace, treating a steady stream of injured and malnourished Unas. As he examined a young patient, he called out to Kennedy, who was conferring with Zara nearby. Captain, 
You need to see this, Reeves said, his face grim. He pointed to a series of dark lesions on the child's scales. These aren't from the fighting. It's chemical exposure, and I'm seeing it everywhere. Kennedy's brow furrowed as he examined the child. How widespread is this? Too widespread, Reeves replied. We're looking at a systemic issue. As if on cue, Liam O'Brien's voice crackled over Kennedy's communicator. Captain, I've got some troubling data from our atmospheric scans. The pollution levels are off the charts. Kennedy exchanged a worried glance with Zara. Looks like we've got another battle on our hands, he said. In the war room of the former governor's mansion, now serving as the headquarters for Zephyria's transitional government, Kennedy gathered his team. Holograms flickered to life, displaying dire projections of Zephyria's ecological collapse. O'Brien stepped forward, his fingers dancing across a control panel. We've got a solution, but it's not without risks. A new image appeared, showing a swarm of nanites cascading through Zephyria's atmosphere. Experimental terraforming technology. It could purge the pollutants and jumpstart the planet's recovery. Zara leaned in, her eyes wide. How long? Cycles instead of generations, O'Brien replied. An Advin administrator bristled. This is far too dangerous. We cannot risk... We'll do it, Zara cut him off, her voice firm. My people have suffered enough. We won't condemn future generations to a dying world. As preparations for the terraforming project began, a new threat emerged. Reports of guerrilla attacks by serious loyalists flooded in, threatening to destabilize the fragile peace. Asha, her arm in a sling from a recent skirmish, paced the war room. We need to strike back hard, she growled. Show them we won't tolerate any resistance. Zara shook her head. No, we can't fall into the same cycle of violence that brought us here. We need to offer a path to reconciliation. Kennedy nodded in agreement. We'll increase security, but we'll also open channels for defectors. Show them there's a place for everyone in the new Zephyria. As the debate continued, a priority alert flashed across the hollow map. Kennedy's eyes narrowed as he read the intel report. We've got a location on Sirius, he announced. He's holed up in a military outpost trying to rally his remaining forces. Zara's scales bristled. We need to go after him. This ends now. Kennedy studied her face, seeing the weight of years of oppression in her eyes. Agreed. I'll lead a strike team with Yonkar's Advin elites. We'll bring him in to face justice. As Kennedy prepared for the mission, O'Brien approached with a sealed container. The terraforming crucible, he explained. Once we've secured Sirius, give me the signal. I'll launch it from orbit and begin the process. Kennedy took the container, feeling the weight of Zephyria's future in his hands. Understood. Let's finish this. The strike team's dropships screamed through Zephyria's skies, heading for Sirius's last bastion. As they approached, Kennedy steeled himself for the battle ahead, knowing that the true test of their ideals was yet to come. Kennedy's boots crunched over debris as he surveyed the progress on Zephyria's capital city. Scaffolding rose around half-rebuilt structures, and the air hummed with the sound of construction drones. Zara stood beside him, her scales gleaming in the sunlight. It's coming along, Kennedy said, gesturing to a newly completed community center. Zara nodded, her expression guarded. Thanks to your people and the Advin. But we have a long way to go. A distant explosion shattered the relative calm. Kennedy's hand flew to his sidearm as Zara's communicator crackled to life. Counselor, insurgents have hit the Eastern A distribution center. Zara's claws clenched. Sorak, she hissed. In the days that followed, attacks escalated. Kennedy found himself in heated debates with Zara and the Advent peacekeepers. We need to hit them harder, Yonkar insisted, slamming a fist on the war room table. Crush this insurgency before it spreads. Kennedy shook his head. More violence will only breed more resentment. We need to address the root causes. A deafening blast cut him off. The room shook and alarms blared. The construction site! Zara shouted, already sprinting for the door. They arrived to find chaos. Smoke billowed from shattered equipment, and wounded workers stumbled through the haze. Among them, Kennedy spotted a familiar face. Asha! He rushed to her side, 
The Una's fighter lay crumpled against a fallen beam, her scales slick with blood. Cowards, she coughed, clutching her side. They won't face us directly. As medics rushed Asha away, Kennedy saw something change in Zara's eyes. The measured politician vanished, replaced by a warrior out for blood. Enough, she snarled. Yonkar, you have my authorization. Hunt them down. All of them. Kennedy opened his mouth to protest, but Zara was already striding away, issuing rapid-fire orders into her comm. Weeks passed and the situation deteriorated. Kennedy watched with growing unease as Advin strike teams conducted brutal raids on suspected insurgent hideouts. Civilian casualties mounted. This isn't right, he muttered, poring over casualty reports in his quarters. A chime at the door interrupted his brooding. Asha limped in, her arm in a sling. Captain, she said, her voice low. I need to talk to you about Zara. Kennedy listened as Asha poured out her doubts, her fears that Zara's quest for vengeance was leading them down a dark path. I've known her for years, Asha said, her eyes haunted. I've never seen her like this. It's like, like she's becoming what we fought against. Before Kennedy could respond, alarms blared once more. This time, the threat was aimed directly at the heart of the new government. Assassination attempt on Counselor Zara, the comms officer's voice rang out. Multiple casualties at the public forum. In the aftermath, Kennedy found Zara in the war room, her scales overflowing with almost unchecked rage. This ends now, she hissed. Yonkar, initiate purge protocol. I want every suspected insurgent stronghold wiped off the map. Zara, wait, Kennedy protested. Think about what you're doing. But Zara was beyond reason. As Advin bombers took to the skies, O'Brien burst into the room, his face pale. Captain, we've got a problem, he said. The terraforming nanites, they're destabilizing the planet's crust. If we don't evacuate now, millions could die. Kennedy's mind raced. He looked from O'Brien's urgent face to Zara's vengeful glare, knowing the next few moments would shape Zephyria's future and humanity's place in the galaxy. Kennedy's mind raced as he processed O'Brien's warning about the terraforming nanites. The immediate threat of planetary destruction overshadowed even Zara's vengeful rampage. Abort the bombing runs, Kennedy barked into his communicator. Yonkar, stand down immediately. We have a planet-wide emergency. Zara whirled on him, her scales dripping. You can't. We don't have time, Kennedy cut her off. If we don't act now, there won't be a Zephyria left to save. The next hours passed in a blur of frantic activity. Kennedy coordinated with O'Brien and the Advin scientists, desperately working to stabilize the nanites before they triggered catastrophic tectonic shifts. Evacuation orders went out across the planet, filling the skies with shuttles and starships. In the chaos, Kennedy lost track of Zara. It wasn't until days later when the immediate crisis had passed that he learned she had stepped down from leadership. I'm not fit to lead, she told him, her voice hollow. I became what we fought against. Dana will do better. Kennedy watched as Zara's lieutenant, Dana, took the reins of Zephyria's fledgling government. The Advent peacekeepers began to withdraw, leaving behind only a small advisory force. Are you sure about this? Kennedy asked Dana as they stood in the newly christened council chambers. Zephyria is still fragile. Dana's expression was resolute. We need to stand on our own feet. Your people have done enough, Captain Kennedy. It's time for the Unas to forge our own path. Reluctantly, Kennedy agreed. He issued orders for human forces to maintain a hands-off approach, providing only humanitarian aid and technical assistance as Zephyria rebuilt. Months passed. Kennedy found himself back on Earth, facing skeptical politicians and an angry public. The casualties from what the media dubbed the Una's conflict had inflamed isolationist sentiments. We have no business meddling in alien affairs, one senator thundered during a heated committee hearing. How many more human lives will you sacrifice for these, these lizards? Kennedy leaned into the microphone, his voice steady. Senator, with all due respect, that meddling prevented a genocide. The Una's are sentient beings, just like us. Their lives matter. He embarked on a grueling speaking tour, recounting the Odyssey's mission to packed auditoriums across Earth. 
Kennedy described the horrors they'd witnessed, the impossible choices they'd faced, and the resilience of both humans and Unas in the face of adversity. We didn't go to Zafiria looking for a fight, he told a rapt audience in New Delhi. We went because it was the right thing to do. And in doing so, we showed the galaxy that humanity stands for something greater than mere self-interest. Slowly, public opinion began to shift. Kennedy's impassioned advocacy struck a chord, particularly among younger generations hungry for a more principled approach to galactic affairs. Back on Zephyria, Asha threw herself into her new role on Dana's Security Council. She oversaw the dismantling of military strongholds, working to transform a war-torn society into a peaceful democracy. But as elections approached, she grew increasingly uneasy. Captain, she said during a secure comm call with Kennedy, her voice low, I'm worried. There are factions here, people who think we've gone soft. They're stockpiling weapons, spreading propaganda against the reforms. Kennedy frowned. Do you need us to intervene? Asha hesitated. I don't know. Maybe some advisors? To help train our security forces? But if you come in too strong... I understand, Kennedy said. I'll see what I can do. He assembled a small team of specialists, peacekeeping experts, civil rights advisors, and tactical trainers. They deployed to Zephyria with strict orders to maintain a low profile, working behind the scenes to bolster Dana's government. As the election neared, tensions on Zephyria reached a boiling point. A firebrand named Jarek burst onto the political scene, his speeches filled with xenophobic rhetoric and thinly veiled threats of violence. The humans and their Advin lapdogs want to destroy our way of life, Jarek roared to a crowd of angry supporters. They've corrupted our leaders, but we won't let them steal our planet. Kennedy watched the footage with growing alarm. He turned to Asha, who stood grim-faced beside him in the Odyssey's command center. We can't let this derail everything we fought for, Kennedy said. But we also can't be seen interfering in Zephyria's democratic process. Asha nodded. So what do we do? Before Kennedy could answer, an alert flashed across the main screen. Dana had been attacked at a campaign rally, beaten nearly to death by Jarek's supporters. Zephyria is on the brink, Asha said, her voice tight. If we don't act now, everything we've built could come crashing down. Kennedy's eyebrows furrowed as he weighed their options. The fate of Zephyria, and perhaps humanity's place in the galaxy, hung in the balance. Kennedy's heart made as he watched the live feed from Zephyria's capital. Smoke billowed from burning buildings as insurgents clashed with peacekeepers in the streets. The carefully laid plans for a peaceful transition had unraveled in a matter of days. Status report, he barked, turning to his command staff. Lieutenant Reyes stepped forward, her face grim. Sir, Jarek's forces have seized control of three major population centers. We're seeing widespread voter intimidation and attacks on polling stations. Several moderate candidates have been hospitalized after targeted assaults. Kennedy nodded, processing the information. And Dana? Secure for now, but we've had to move her to an undisclosed location. The capital is no longer safe. A thunderous explosion rocked the command center. Alarms blared as damage reports flooded in. That was the eastern perimeter, Reyes shouted over the din. They've breached our defenses. Kennedy strode to the hollow map, assessing the rapidly deteriorating situation. Deploy Fireteam Echo to reinforce that sector. I want air support on standby. As his orders were relayed, a priority comm channel lit up. Dana's face appeared, her scales pale with stress. Captain Kennedy, Jarek is broadcasting across all channels. He's declaring the election invalid and claiming power for himself. Kennedy's fist clenched. He won't get away with this. We'll... The transmission cut off abruptly as another explosion shook the building. Sir, we've lost contact with Dana's security detail, Reyes reported, her voice tight. Kennedy made a split-second decision. Prep a strike team. We're going in to extract her ourselves. Hours later, Kennedy crouched behind a bombed-out storefront, plasma rounds sizzling overhead. Asha materialized beside him, her scales caked with dust and blood. This is madness, she hissed. We should have taken Jarek out when we had the chance. Kennedy shook his head. That's not our way. 
we can't abandon our principles even now. A nearby building erupted in flames as Jarek's forces unleashed another barrage. Kennedy tapped his comm, relaying coordinates to the orbiting Odyssey. Moments later, precision fire rained down, scattering the insurgents. As they pushed forward through the chaos, Kennedy's mind raced. How had it come to this? The promise of a free Zephyria seemed to be slipping away with each passing moment. They found Dana holed up in a makeshift bunker, surrounded by a handful of loyal guards. Her eyes blazed with grit as she gripped Kennedy's arm. We can't let Jarek win, she said. The people chose peace. We have to honor that. Kennedy nodded grimly. We will. But first, we need to get you out of here. As they fought their way to the extraction point, Kennedy's calm crackled to life. It was O'Brien, his voice urgent. Captain, we've intercepted transmissions from Jarek's compound. He's planning something big, some kind of final push to seize control. Kennedy ducked as another volley of plasma fire streaked overhead. Understood. We'll deal with it once we've secured Dana. But even as the words left his mouth, Kennedy knew the true test was yet to come. The battle for Zephyria's soul had only just begun. The Zephyrian capital burned. Plasma fire lit up the night sky as Kennedy and his team fought their way through the chaos. Jarek's insurgents had entrenched themselves in every building, turning the once gleaming metropolis into a hellscape of urban warfare. Contact left, Reyes shouted, ducking behind a wrecked vehicle as energy bolts sizzled past. Kennedy returned fire, his weapons recoil jarring his bones. Months passed in a blur of firefights, strategic withdrawals, and hard-won victories. Kennedy's forces cleared neighborhoods block by block, but Jarek remained elusive, his influence spreading like a virus through disaffected Una's communities. Asha burst into the command center, scales glistening with sweat. We've got him, she panted. Jarek, he's holed up in the old Highcrest district. Kennedy studied the holographic map, noting the fallen upper-class enclave. Time for Prometheus, he said grimly. Hours later, Kennedy crouched in the belly of a stealth dropship, surrounded by the elite operatives of Raven Company. Asha's scaled hand gripped his shoulder as the craft shuddered through re-entry. Thirty seconds to insertion, the pilot's voice crackled over the comm. They hit the ground running, night vision bathing the world in eerie green. Plasma bolts erupted from concealed positions, cutting down two ravens before they could find cover. Push forward, Kennedy roared, returning fire as they advanced through the shattered luxury homes. Room by room, they fought deeper into Jarek's stronghold. Blood, human and Una's alike, slicked the opulent floors. Kennedy's lungs burned as they reached the command center, kicking down the reinforced door. Jarek stood amid banks of flickering screens, eyes wild. You'll never take Zephyria, he snarled, lunging at Kennedy with inhuman speed. They grappled, crashing into consoles. Asha joined the fray, her powerful tail sweeping Jarek's legs. But the crazed leader was far from finished. With a maniacal laugh, he hit his fist onto a hidden panel. The world exploded. Kennedy felt himself falling, crushed beneath tons of rubble and twisting metal. Darkness claimed him. He awoke to the sterile white of the Odyssey's medbay, every nerve screaming in agony. Asha's face swam into view, her scales pale with worry. Kennedy, she whispered, the doctors, they say... He knew. The finality settled over him like a shroud. How long? Hours, Asha choked out. Kennedy nodded, steeling himself. Get Dana and the other Zephyrian leaders. There's work to do. They gathered around his bed, Dana, her arm in a sling, Liam O'Brien, his face etched with concern, and a dozen other key figures in Zephyria's fledgling democracy. Kennedy's voice was weak, but his words carried the weight of command. Listen carefully, he began. What comes next? It's up to you, now. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.